You talk about regulation. There's this uh, memo that came out from Google, leaked memo a couple months ago, which is the we have no moat memo. And um, for people that aren't familiar with it, it basically said that an internal Google employee, I'm pretty sure it's been, most people agree it, it's actually real, said that here we are trying to compete with OpenAI and we're both gonna lose because the open source is developing and innovating faster than us, then it, rep, then it references the leaked uh, Llama model, the meta one, and the leaked weightings, and then it started to show that within days, they were making major innovations, sometimes from people that weren't even educated or skilled in AI. And sometimes these things were on laptops and then they were you know, chopping down a lot of these big neural nets into where they could be trained even on a chat GPT. And all of a sudden you have decentralized AI development, which yeah. is even harder to regulate. First, it also means that maybe open AI doesn't have the competitive advantage that we thought it did. Maybe none, a lot of these companies don't with the tens of billions and the GPUs, et cetera. What do you make of all that? Do you agree with any of that? Great point. So, okay. so Llama is the least spoken about, even though its nature of being open source is definitely worthy of, uh, of, uh, of, of notice, right? Because of what you just said, because if you make a technology open source, it's developed much quicker with the public. However, there are always two things that end up happening with open source. When it reaches a certain point, uh, it becomes closed source. So remember, Llama continues to be owned by Meta. So there will be a point at which Meta will say, okay, and we'll take those parts of it and just keep it for ourselves. Happened every single time. Uh, you know, OpenAI itself was open uh, at the beginning. Uh, the second and most interesting is that uh, the power of AI is not tech in itself. It's tech breakthrough and infrastructure. So the biggest two differentiators uh, on, uh, on, on why someone would lead at the core architecture of AI is not that they developed a very sophisticated piece of code. The, the, I think GPT-4 is like 4,000 4, lines of code, the core code, okay? And it's not that complicated and it leaks, so everyone has it. This is why GPT started to pop up in China and Russia and everywhere in the world, right? The, the, the challenge, just like search, when, when I used to run Google, you know, I used to get innovators from all over the world that would come to my office and say, hey, you know, uh, I've developed this thing, which is super clever. I'm going to annihilate Google. And I am, a, I am a good person. I don't want to compete with anyone. I would normally sit them down and I would say, you know, amazing. This is, I'm very, very, you know, impressed by what you did. This is well done. Search is not a tech problem. Search is an infrastructure problem. Okay, so without the crawlers, without the network, without the, the ability for you to become aware that Osama bin Laden was shot a minute ago and it's all over the news, without that infrastructure, the best search technology on the planet is not going to get to, to yield any positive, you know, any plausible, valuable results. That's the same case with AI. So, so when, when we talk about the progress of AI going forward, especially the big, big stuff, you know, the language models and, and the real core architecture of, of AI, the only two ways you can benefit so that GPT-5 or 6 is better than 4 is either throw more infrastructure on it or find a breakthrough. A breakthrough is a very different thing than just more tech development. When a breakthrough is found in open source normally, the company becomes greedy and takes it offline. Okay, so you're gonna see a bit of faster development, in my personal view, on Llama, on others, right? Uh, but then eventually, uh, I don't know if Mark Zuckerberg is going to be the most charitable person in the world if he has the biggest breakthrough on the planet and keep that for, for humanity to use. Will it be too late though? Will there already be something in the public space and then? Which is, which is the case on almost every AI technology okay. uh, out there. It's, it, the, 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 the game here is that uh, when I when I when I started coding, I'm a very old man. For I'm not very old, but I'm old, right? For what's happening today, I, I coded on Sinclairs and Commodores, and I you know coded Basic cool. and Cobol and Fortran and you know weird languages, and they were very effort intensive. So you would write eighty thousand lines of code to do something. And you had to lie to write every line, 
okay? And, and now the, in, the, the intelligence is not in the code, the intelligence is in the algorithm. Okay, and and the architectures, you know, something like a transformer that basically uses re, uses reinforcement learning to improve. That architecture is written in a very very limited amount of of lines. Okay, and when I explain the concept to you, you can go and write those lines yourself. So you don't need you, there is no breakthrough in writing the code. There is a breakthrough in the concept that you know if you if you watch any of Jeffrey Hinton's uh, uh, videos he talks about how he did that in a you know in early years but he only had a sample size of a hundred um, entries or whatever so it couldn't he couldn't prove that by growing the sample size things will actually become much more intelligent now the minute something like chat GPT starts to prove that Everyone out there is saying, how did they do it? They did it with this, then let's replicate it. Okay. So, so yeah, I, I, I see the benefit. And again, I, I, you know, I, I think everyone is pouring investment and effort and ideas to, to grow AI going forward. Who will find that the breakthrough? We don't know. It could be open source or it could be uh, you know, the big players. But who has the infrastructure, the big data? Uh, it's definitely the big players. So Jim Rickards has just recorded a video that's not available to anyone in the public and he's gonna be talking about how this upcoming recession is gonna be fast, it's gonna be bloody, it's gonna be nasty. But at the same time, he's gonna show you how you can position yourself to profit from all of this chaos. Now we've made this video only available to our viewers. Go to LondonRealTV forward slash Jim, watch that immediately. I can't say enough good things about Jim Rickards. He understands the global economic system better than any guest I've ever had on London Real. His predictions are almost uncannily true, and you can learn how to profit from his vision, from his expertise, and his understanding of economics. So go to LondonReal.tv forward slash Jim or click the link below. It's an excellent, excellent look on what's gonna happen in the future and how you can position yourself to profit from that. Jim is one of the best in the business one of my favorite guests on London Real, and he's very, very good at predicting the future and showing us all to profit from it. So click the link and I hope you enjoy. Hey, do you wanna profit from crypto? Then join my DeFi Academy. The Crypto DeFi Academy will help you create generational wealth. But don't take my word for it, listen to my students. When I first got into crypto, I remember thinking to myself, I need to learn more. Brian Rose, learning crypto. Learning DeFi, gotta do it. I am so grateful that I jumped in and did this. I had to break through some limiting beliefs that I can do this, that I can afford this, that I can be in this. It challenges um, the things that are deeply rooted within us. Joining DeFi Academy has been one of the best decisions I have made on my blockchain journey. This course was a life changer, a game changer, a huge eye opener coming from knowing practically nothing at the speed of the learning over the over four weeks was just fantastic. The information you provided in this class was invaluable. I feel far more confident in my next steps. You took complex concepts and made them easier to understand. What's different than so many other ones is it just doesn't tell you what to do. It uh, actually makes you do it. This is for people who are serious about becoming traders. This is the way it should be done. I realized from this learning experience again that it is not about what you learn, but about who you learn it from. The energy was insane. I've, I've never experienced such incredible energy on a live call. Brian Rose, you, you are a legend, my friend. It's the only thing in the market where you can get all information and learn everything what you need to know. Everything is so clear and so well done, and I am um, just forever grateful for this program. It made me feel so much more confident about crypto than I did before. I did not anticipate how passionate I was going to become about it. This course has been like a big learning experience for me, not just in the crypto space, but just uh, an overall uh, balance of life. What I've learned is, you know, how to take ownership, you know, of my life in a way that um, I really, I really hadn't before. Yeah, you can't put a price on that, really. I would recommend it to anybody top notch. Excellence does not come cheap. You know, so if you want excellence, you got to pay for it, but it's so worth it. Pull the trigger. That's what this course is about. You're not going to regret it, really. 
It's amazing. Thank you, Brian and team. So what are you waiting for? Crypto is happening now. Click the link below, submit your application, and let me mentor you on how to create generational wealth and build the decentralized financial infrastructure of the future.